Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, and you are just in time to join the vanguard of Flanch and his army as it marches out of Wexford and heads for Nace, and from there across to Clonmacnoise to join up, probably, with Dunica's army and plan a march into the southwest and an attack on Munster. So I'm going to continue getting more food. And I was trying to figure out what we were going to build here in Wexford after it was seized on the last episode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the grain pits. That's going to generate minus 100 gold per turn. It's going to give us some food production, however. And there are three tiers to that building up as far as granary. And once I have that built, I'll actually be able to unlock the windmill technology and start progressing down the agriculture route. And we're going to need that. Farm income isn't much good to us. Public order will be helpful, as will that food production bonus in all regions. So that will allow us to power the army. And speaking of Nace, I do at some stage want to build the Church of the Oak for the fame and public order predominantly and for that bit of church income so that's going to that's not actually going to require any food that's fantastic but we will of course have to continue upping the monastery of saint Chiron and eventually minus a hundred food at the next improvement level right i'm going to bring this turn to an end we're going to see how the vikings of dublin respond now that we have made peace with them. And we will see how Munster responds. If Munster actually starts doing anything. If it has figured out that it is our next target. So we have somebody in the family. It looks like we have a child. Ardgar. Joyous occasion. So another son to put in the army in a couple of years time. And a fleet of Viking Raiders. Oh, the devils. Ah, they're, they're way... Sure, we don't even know where that is. We don't even know what's going on over there. We've pretty good radar to know that uh, they're coming in from that direction. Here we have... Our governors and... Well, there's our son. He's become a herder. And... Clerican. Who is governing in Clan McNoise. Governing Meath. Expertly armoured. He's he's putting on a lot of armour for a man who has never left Clan McNoise. I'm just after saying some terrible things about Clerkin. I was wrong. He is not our governor. Aramon is our governor. Clerkin, I'm sorry. I didn't mean what I said. And the English woman that pops up in the corner and tells me things every once in a while, and I tell her to go away, she's after saying that Aramon has been left a bachelor for too long, and if we find him a wife... It might renew his vigor. So let's see about finding a wife for him. 520 quid. They're expensive, these wives. So we found Gormla. Sensible. And look at this. Plus one to governance. Plus one to zeal. Plus one to... I was going to say plus one to husband. Plus one to loyalty. Can't argue about that. Take her hand. We're being told we have low public order in Leinster and low loyalty in Fair Car, the governor of Wexford. So I'm a bit apprehensive about moving this man northwards. Uh, that has indeed brought Leinster back under control. We now have a risk of rebellion in Wexford. Hmm, that is a bit problematic. Now, one of the first things that I could do is I could give the governor, Fair Car, an estate. But I don't want to. So let's see if we can either secure his loyalty for 600 or find a wife for him. I think we'll actually try and secure his loyalty. So we could do nothing, which is no good to us. We could... Bribe him with words for plus one loyalty, or pay him off for another 500. So that is going to be 
over a thousand spent on this guy alone. But we'll get plus two loyalty. So do you know what? I'm going to take that option. Now, unfortunately, that hasn't had a tremendous impact on the public order. However, if this region does not revolt by next year, we will be able to hold the fair of Taltu. It will start to diminish our resources a bit, which is kind of problematic. I was thinking of raising some forces with uh, Clericon, or Clerican, and having him march down to assist this area. I think we'll try and hold out. We have another revolt kicking off in North. So that region is being problematic. Actually, they've taken it from the Vikings. We don't care too much about what's going on there. And the last thing I will do is I will recruit another unit of skirmishers for Dunnikid Don's army. I was considering getting some horse boys, but we don't have a huge amount of money. We don't have a huge amount of money. So our expansion is curtailing us a small bit at the moment. And so we don't have a lot more that we can do other than to keep an eye on Wexford and hope that it doesn't revolt before we can hold a big party next, I was going to say next year, in the next season. The joys of spring. Eremon has gained the trait on Sosta. As a newlywed, his priorities naturally lie elsewhere right now. I'm sure they do the devil. Tiernan in... Well, look at this. Tiernan in... Wait, who the hell is Tiernan? Tiernan is a governor. I thought it was Fair Car that was governing in... Wexford. Fair Car must be in... I have too many places. I have too many places. He's after becoming... Where's it gone to? I'm so confused by all these people. Fair Car is indeed governing in Wexford. This is Tiernan who's governing in Leinster. Like I said, there are too many places. He's gained a trait that has knocked his loyalty down by one. No idea what it was. How we could set about bribing him. We're not exactly in a position where we need to worry too much at the moment. And of course, the other thing is that... Okay, we'll go in this order. I will hold the Fair of Talthu. So we decree the Fair. Out goes. That's a haggard looking bird. So Leinster's in a great old state. Wexford is returning to something representing normality. We're going to have to... We're going to have to do something here. I don't think we need this workshop especially as it's causing minus one public order dismantle right now we don't need to worry too much about the loyalty of Tiernan because we have the king Flanchina wandering around the territory so he's not going to do nothing skills available Donikadan can get himself a promotion and again, we might as well just keep giving him champions. We'll give him a champion. Now, he's already done this once or twice before. Once before. We might as well do it again. Kilmour has fallen to rebels. In we go. Does anybody remember when I said that we were going to prepare for the invasion of Munster? Do you remember that? Do you remember that plan? Here is our favorite little hiding spot. We're gonna hide behind this. They'll have no idea that we're coming for them. I probably won't go through this battle in much detail because it is a carbon copy of the last one that Dunnikadon fought. We have superior numbers. We do have some weakened units which are still recruiting. And some of our horsemen have taken a bit of a bathering. But it shouldn't go too badly. So as we're advancing forward, we do have some arrows raining down from their archers. Not a huge lot that we can do about that. Uh, we could consider my favorite tactic. 
of causing them to fall back. And I think some of them are beginning to move forward. And we have a charge and a massive heap of javelins come out from our ranks. So they are abandoning their position. We'll get some charges in. And where are the swordsmen? On the flank. I'll get these guys to just pull back. No point in having them doing much. And their archers are left undefended. One of their units here had just rallied. Their horsemen had actually remained out of the combat for pretty much the, the whole thing. Uh, they've just pulled out of the forest, appeared out of nowhere. And I've sent in everyone that stayed behind. To fight them, their general is dead. Rows and rows of dead forces. And there you go. So another strike against Kilmour. And we got a good chunk of money the last time, and yeah, they haven't had they haven't had much time to put that money back together. We will sack the region. Oh, yes. Argulla, look, we're helping. We're helping Argulla. So Argulla has been in a bad situation since it's push into Dublin. Of course, the problem is that Kilmour is part of Brefni. So it's attached to Drumahair, which is controlled by Alok. So Argulla, if they were intelligent, would probably just leave Alok take this region. And with that bit of money that we're after getting from the raid on Kilmour, we're actually in a position to begin constructing the Church of the Oak. So that will give us plus 10 fame, 15 church income, 2 public order, very important for when the fair of Taltu goes down. And we'll also increase our chances of having children. And at the top it'll give us a plus 6 public order bonus, 30 fame, 30% 30 chance of having children, and 35% income from the church. So that's not too shabby. Right, I managed to find out all the all the traits again. I was pressing that button. Tiernan has become influential, the devil. So he's got plus one governance, minus one loyalty. Gain from having ten influence. The new active trait is noble. Hedonica has become confident and has gotten himself a gammy arm. When his father gets injured, people get afraid of him. When this lad gets injured, he loses... Oh, enemy morale goes down as well. Okay, so there you go. Everyone's afraid of everyone's afraid of everyone because they're injured. Fantastic. I forgot to check, but Dublin has retaken North. I don't know if they're in a position to consider marching on Dublin. And I don't know what's happening with its other forces. Well, I don't think it has any other forces down here. So there we go. We bring. A somewhat active summer of 885 to an end. We'll get Flanchin as far as Nace and maybe Clonard by the winter or by the end of the winter of 885. Tiernan, what are you doing? Oh, look, a butterfly. Isn't that glorious? Rumor has it that one of your men has been distracted by his passions whilst appreciating beauty is a healthy trait in a man. His love is drawing him away from his sworn duties. Perhaps you should beat some sense into him before it's too late. So we could focus his mind. Minus one loyalty and he would become acrimonious. Not too sure what that does. He's already at one so that's going to bring him to zero loyalty. Or we could lose some influence and some loyalty. I have a feeling that Tiernan is going to be taking a long walk off a short cliff quite shortly. We'll focus his mind. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm finding this whole legitimacy thing a bit strange. It's at minus four at the moment. We can increase it by owning cultural land. We own quite a lot of cultural land, but apparently that isn't good enough. It's telling us we have zero allies. Well, it's saying changes from the last turn, so there have been no changes. But uh, because of the rate that it's at, we are suffering a minus one loyalty penalty from all characters. We're suffering minus ten tax, as can be shown up there in the top left. That's gone down a chunk. Minus three melee skill for all units. So I'm not entirely too sure how to get this number up and keep it up. As far as I know, raids are actually going to be a negative. So we could start raiding regions, but that's actually going to be a negative trait. So yeah, that's uh, that's causing us some problems here in Wexford. I was looking at building some stuff to sort out this public order penalty. We could go for a church. I'm thinking of going for a church maybe in the next in the next round. So we can get up to a fairly high level of church income. Well, a high modifier for church income. This actually gives us church income. This just gives us a modifier. So we could go with building a high cross instead. Uh, the one thing that we do have, however, is research. New research available. Because we researched church music. Plus 3 XP for generals per turn. So that's quite handy. That's going to be four turns to get church care, plus 15% income from churches. That might be helpful with this massive legitimacy penalty, which can go as, as high as 50%. Well, that's for income from vassal kingdoms, minus 30% tax. I don't really have any idea how we're going to stop that slide. And we are going to be waiting a while for agriculture to come on board. Do you know what? We as might as well. Go on. Go on. We will have a flange and a march from wherever glory. the hell he is, and we'll get him to march Move into Nice. And as we don't have a huge amount else to do at the moment, I might very well look at finding a wife for this disloyal devil. I can never remember, is this fair car, Tiernan? We'll try and find a wife. Uh oh, I think that's not great. Plus one influence, that's definitely not what we want. And plus one zeal, he has too much influence, the devil. We'll turn her down. We'll see if he can sort himself out in the next turn, and if not, when we have the money together, he's going to have to be dumped out, I, I have a feeling. I've spoken about how I have wanted to form an alliance with Connacht, and Connacht will not accept an alliance. I could even start throwing money in there, and they still will not accept so one thing that we can do, we already have a defensive pact with them, You're a welcome sight. is to what negotiate an alliance with Donal. So, military alliance. It's sufficient. Makes sense to me. Well, there you go. Now that has taken us out of that legitimacy deficit. Should I... Should I keep cancelling and reforming the alliance? Is that what you're telling me? Cancel, reform, cancel, reform, cancel, reform. And I'll keep getting... Because that five is going to go on the next turn, from what I understand. Uh, we can also get legitimacy from some of our... Technology. So we'd be going through leadership. So great whole type settlements. We have... One of those, I think, Nace. So we could go for these buildings to try and you know what we'll probably need that 25 fame that would be helpful and that would be helpful so instead of heading for Dublin Dublin is heading out to sea I'm not too sure where they're going we're going to spend the autumn in Nace during the winter we'll probably make it to Clonard Tiernan, you have one, maybe two turns to sort yourself out. Oh god, we have a call to arms. So they're going to war against Ulla. This is the problem about these alliances, which I needed to get out of that legitimacy penalty. We could decline and break the alliance, and then what, reform it? 
We'll enter the war on the side of our ally. So a fleet of Dovgol raiders have come in. Where have they actually come in? I accidentally moved. How the hell they got up there, I'm not too sure. But they're coming in around Mayo. So that's, that's grand. At cultural backsliding, people are displeased that their creativity is being stifled and are blaming you for the predicament. Sometimes you just can't win. So what are we here? Minus 15 fame. But I want to live forever. At Clonmacnoise, we have reached level 3 on the Monastery of St. Kiron chain. So we're at the Abbey. The monastery is next, then Cathedral. So there is a lot of work to do. There is a lot of work to do. I'm going to begin building a library. Minus 100 gold per turn, minus 5 food production, plus 1 public order, plus 10% research rate. And I'm going to try and upgrade that as quickly as possible. And I'm also being told that we can upgrade our governors, both of them. So here is Fair Car in Wexford. So I'll give him plus 5% income and plus 1 governance. And you, you devil, you're going to confession. We'll get some loyalty out of him. Now, if we want to go down that legitimacy route of research, I think the Moot Hill is the only thing that we can build. We can build one in Wexford. The problem is it's going to eventually get to minus 15 corruption. I don't know what that is. Doesn't sound good, though. I might have to start building it. I might have to, unfortunately, start building it. We do actually have the money for it. And if I can get the three levels of that built, we can start in there. Then again, I was going to continue pushing here for the grain silo, and I think I'd have enough in the next turn to start pushing for agriculture. It's going to be a while, though, before we're going to need any of that agriculture. Go on. Let's become corrupt. And I'm actually not in a position to march Flanchina to Clonard, so he's going to be spending the winter in Nace, and as for Dunica Don, I am in a position, I think, to march him to North, but we're not at war with them, so he will, at some stage, be marching in this direction for Carlin. It is some, for some reason, it belongs to Ulla, okay. I think this entire region belonged to Ulla at one stage, and basically they have been stripped to very little. So Dunicadon will go in and raid that area, hopefully. Alok will go in and take their remaining region, and this war won't last too long. Right, well, never mind. Political gain, Tiernan. What's Tiernan after doing? This man, hungry for power, has positioned... He has power. He's a governor. Has positioned himself to take office without your approval. He may be suited to him. He is not suited to the task. But can you afford to let his ambitious ambitions threaten your family's power? No, is the short answer. Block this move. So, he would become king's captain. Go way out of that. So here is Fair Car. Fair Car, what have you done? Oh god, what have you done? Minus two public order. God damn you to hell. Clerkin, you're about the only person I can trust. What are we going to do to you? We're going to give you a champion. You're the only person I can trust, and you have no soldiers. You have no units under your command. We'll start building an army for you now soon. At the start there I said we could uh, never mind about my plans towards the end of the last turn. Arguilla have seized this region and I don't know how they've... Okay, well fantastic. So that area was indeed retaken by... Or it was taken by... By Alok. But somehow... Moyville is now under... All this control. Lads, you just sort this out amongst yourselves.
as he's not in a position to do anything else at the moment. And so we can march him in any direction. And I don't have any buildings that I can or want to build. Let's try and find a wife for our dear son, Donikadan. So plus two to public order when the husband is governing. Uh, plus one zeal, minus 50% chance of having illegitimate children. Uh, we'll... We'll hold on. We haven't been able to give him a wife, but you know what we can give him? Horse boys. And Clerk and you poor man, we will finally give you something vaguely resembling an army. We will say two spearmen. A swordsman. That's 30 food. I was going to put some horsemen in there, but we don't actually have options for that at the moment. So I will say that I'm happy with that. And I believe that we can actually give this guy a promotion. Or upgrade his equipment. And finally, we can start Flanchina's march to Clonard. He's not actually going to be able to reach there. And Dunica done. I'm going to actually begin marching him as far as Arda. And with that done, so we don't have, we're, we're not going to be able to bring much money into the next turn. Our legitimacy has gone back down to zero again as a result of natural decline. I think it's those raids, which is, well, it's the actual attacks on the, um, when we raid these places instead of taking them. So I think that's what's causing the big legitimacy penalties. So I'm not going to be doing that again. I think actually raiding territory also causes legitimacy penalties. So I'm probably not going to do that either. So yeah, with all that done, we don't really have much of an option other than to bring the turn to an end. So we have one faction destroyed. And we have peace negotiated, I see here, between Ulla and Kamath. Tiernan has become bitter. Because we blocked him from taking a position the last time round. So there he is. He is bitter. Zero loyalty. And Eremon. Why can't you be like Eremon, Tiernan? Why? So we can't do much more with this other waste of space. Going to remove him from the governance of Leinster. Now I think he's going to hang around. I uh, could possibly give him military command at some stage. That's, yeah, great idea. This disloyal devil, give him an army. That is a fantastic idea. None of these guys have traits that make them any good at actually governing. So I don't know what the kind of the... The issue here is, there's Ehrman, he'd be great to put in here. Fair Car is improving, fair play to him. Oh, what are we going to do with you devils? Ulkavor, I think we'll take Ulkavor. It's pretty much a, kind of a, a guess, really. Uh, appoint the selected character. It's going to cost 425. It's expensive, dealing with these useless devils. So nobody actually seems to be, like, good at being a commander. It's a kind of a strange... It's a strange system. Or a, a governor, I should say. Now, of course, we could start giving these people estates. Uh, maybe here we're in a better position to start handing out estates. So that is Ulkavor. We have two agricultural estates. I could very well uh, hand one of those on. Why has this dropped again? Because of the natural decline, but... Okay. Uh, Ulkavor, I could give him one of these estates, but what it's going to do is bring down our food surplus, so we're actually handing over the area itself. It'd be handy if there was a noble estate. The religious estate, I could grant that to him and get zero loyalty. We'll hold on and we'll see how he does. We might have to find a wife for him as well. Wexford has hit low public order if it can hold out two more turns. This will bring it up by one. So the fair of Taltu has just ended. We're not in a position to start another one. 
Now we are a turn away from researching increased church income. Educated nobles. So I was I thought there might be something here that might give us um, a public order boost. I think I will move Dunica into Arda. I'm going to get him to wait there for a turn. Just to get these horse by recruits up. This lad is fine. So I'm actually going to have him. I don't know if I can march the two of them in here to Clan McNoise. We'll see. We'll see. We'll bring the year to an end and we will begin preparing for the invasion of Ossery, of all things. My intention was to have Dunica seize these areas. Not seize them, just raid them for money. But that's going to be absolutely hammering our legitimacy. So I'm going to have to have Dunica take and occupy these regions and have Flanchina head for... I think he'll have to head probably as far as Cow Park, Akabo, with Dunica. He might even have to go ahead of Dunica and then across to Kashal itself. I really was not planning to take this region, but to keep this legitimacy score from tanking, I think I'm being forced to. So we'll bring the year to an end. None shall stand against us. Oh no! There's a civil war. Whatever will we do? Clan McNoise, go away. Go away, you. Clan McNoise is under siege. Oh, no. Our son, Dunica, has become raving and drooling. Okay. And Ulcavor has gained influence as the governor of Leinster. Oh no, whatever are we going to do? Where the hell is Clan McNoise? No, seriously, where's Clan McNoise? Oh no, whatever are we going to do? Tiernan. Tiernan has four troops. Tiernan doesn't even have enough troops to take on the troops in Clan McNoise. Never mind. This army coming in behind him. We can't reach him, for God's sake. I will, of course, move him forward. It's a good thing we gave that man some troops. And we have some technology developed. So that is the church care. That's 15 increased tax income. Of course, we're getting nothing from Clan McNoise at the moment because it's under siege by an idiot. Educated nobles, that's going to reduce their zeal by one, but increase the research rate. And you know what? We do have a lot of research that we want to get done, especially if we're going to try and get this thing uh, set up at some stage. Thankfully, down here hasn't revolted. Uh, down here hasn't revolted, so... And at the end of one more turn, we will get that uh, that one troop back. Dunica, my raving, drooling mad son. Oh, God. They are now within striking distance of Kells. War is what we do best. Back to Kells. Clericon, you finally get to command an army. Well done. Well done. Fear us. Oh, if only we hadn't moved him us. now. Well, I don't think we would have been in a position to take him on anyway. So there you go. That's uh, that's that fool after falling back. Can he make it to Clonard in a single turn? I don't think so. He's not going to be able to move past Flan Shinna. Uh, again, finances are hit. Again, legitimacy is, is just tanking and is going to start causing trouble. We're going to have to try and hit that army. It's entirely possible. I'd have to go in and just start occupying these places. But they're going to start... Not riots, but again, the public order, because you don't control the whole thing, is just going to start dropping. I'm not going to lie, this is becoming a bit tedious. And we're heading for the winter. We'll bring the autumn to an end, because I don't think there's a huge lot else we can do. We will bring the autumn to an end. Look at the little hat that he's after giving himself, you goddamn moron. So an enemy has become a vassal kingdom. So Ulla has become a vassal of somebody. I don't care. I'm going to make peace with the vassal kingdom. 
Does that mean that Alec is just going to call us straight into another war? Fair play to him. He's gone back. He's he's trying again. If at first you don't succeed with your tiny, inconsequential army, just do the same thing over and over again. Well done. Well done. Surely he's... I was about to say he's going to get mashed between the walls. I was hoping that this poor lad could actually take part. That uh, Clerican could take part. Like... What was the point of this? Other than to annoy me, what was the point of this? Who in their right mind? How did they even get in here? Who in their right mind would place an army there? I wonder if the daft devil thinks he actually has a chance. So we've split them, we split the army, we split the party. The one thing we were always told not to do. Oh, thank God. Our reinforcements have arrived. What would we have done without them? How many, will they even be able to bring everything onto the field? Clerican's first day out on the job. Oh, what the hell do we even do here? You goddamn idiot. You you had a good life. You had a good life in Leinster. Now look at you. Do you do you see this? Do you see this? You goddamn moron. So we're sending in the spear boys. And by the spear boys I mean the horse boys. Which are a type of spear boy. Somebody's lost their horse. So, I don't know, are we within range of anything? Uh-oh, Tiernan's household riders! Oh no! Run away! It's Tiernan! They don't have the numbers. Somebody has just shouted out as though they have realized that for the first time. Well done. Well done. These are the... This is the level of troops that we're dealing with. So, I've just started throwing spears at their second unit of axemen or their second unit of something so there's the spearmen we were targeting and now we have our horse boys in just horsing stuff at them Javelins! Tiernan Tiernan I Tiernan you make one more okay that's it fine oh don't tell me you're not gonna run now you're not gonna run he's not your friend He's not your friend, you idiots. That's it, Tiernan. Keep going. You nearly have him. Oh, you nearly had him, Tiernan. So Tiernan is on the verge of going down. I was hoping to have, like, Flanchina charge in. Do you know what? Go on. He'll send the man in himself. Because he's isolated himself. Is it Flan going in first? It is indeed. These guys are getting themselves into a bad position. We should be in a position to start horsing javelins at him. I picked the wrong units. There are so many now that I literally have no idea what's going on. We let them get a bit too close. I think they're just hoping to make it off the field without anyone noticing that they're there. Uh-oh! Tiernan's realized something bad is happening. I need to get them away and get them to stop throwing spears into the battle. So Tiernan has met the boss and has had a... a review... And it hasn't gone well. I need to pull back. There's so many units that I have no idea where half of them are. And I'm trying to get these guys back the way they just don't end up throwing spears when they shouldn't be. 
Poor Clericon didn't get to do anything. He got to show up, which is important. Clericon, can you... There's Aramon, the actual governor. And there's Clericon. We'll get you to... We'll get you to hold back. You've had enough fun. Let's, let's let other people... Let's let other people... Kill traitors. So here's Aramon, his first day on a horse. Doesn't know what he's doing. He's usually behind the desk, filling out invoices and... I don't know what he's doing. He doesn't really have a lot to do. And here's poor old, poor old Clericon, who... ...has no idea how to actually do a charge, and he is an actual general. But again, it's his first day in battle as well. Uh, he's had to do a tremendous amount of marching around the place to prevent rebellions and to join up uh, to send forces, to recruit forces and then send them off to serve in Dunica and Flan's armies. But it's his first day on the job. He's not He's not doing great. He's not doing great. He doesn't know what which end of the sword you're supposed to hold on to. He got the job done in the end up though. Fair play to him. A great day out for everyone. Tiernan, you goddamn moron. Take on warriors. Who do we ransom them back to? Who's going to give us money for them? Am I going to have to pay for them? Is that it? We'll take them on. 1% unit replenishment rate. Fantastic. Great job. Well done, everyone involved. Except for you, Tiernan. So after that battle, that glorious victory, Flanshin has become a skilled commander, a war chef, and averse to risk, which is a sin. So his zeal has gone up. Gained from a decisive victory, gained from a decisive victory, gained from winning battles when the general attacked and fought in melee. God help us. Look at this. Does that, does that just keep going down? I'm not too sure what we're going to do. Because of the scenario here, we're pretty much going to have to dump Thunica into Kells and protect it. He's not in a position to, to hit Linz. I can't really hold off too much longer before marching in here, but I would like a secondary army that could actually do something. And this isn't really, because what we could be looking at is basically an army sustained by Akabo, an army sustained by Kashal, an army sustained by Cork, an army sustained by Inishfallon, an army sustained by Limerick, and an army Sustained by Kaharkomon hitting us. So that's what we're taking on. Hell's Bells. Our bravery is legendary. Your bravery is legendary, and so too apparently is the fact that you are insane. Here is Dunikadan, we'll give him another commander. Should we give him a quartermaster to increase the campaign movement range? Yeah, in this place, probably. And Flanchina has also gotten stand against us. some traits. His command is fine. We'll improve his quartermaster as well. I'm being told that Ulkavor has low loyalty, or his loyalty is... It could be higher. We'll give him... Does it become higher every time I do this? We'll try and secure his loyalty. I forgot we actually have to pay even more money to him. Uh, bribe him with words. Decrease Flanchina's influence. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bribe him with words. And let's see now if I was going to increase the loyalty here. It has indeed gone up, so that's not something that we can do too many more times. 
for Clerk, and I'd say we could recruit, to be on the safe side, maybe two units. So he has two spearmen and a swordsman. We will give him... Can I give him another swordsman? That's 468. And a horse boy, because he has no skirmishers at the moment. We'll give him a Freeman Javelin Man. And we saw there earlier that Ulla became vassals of somebody else. It was actually Connacht and Ulla that signed a peace treaty. So I'm not too sure. Is Alloch still at war? Don't know, don't care. I don't presume we're in a position to negotiate an alliance. They find it insulting. Uh, we could try to organize a marriage. A demand wife, is this going to be... So we could organize a marriage... Um... Yeah, between our son, Dunica, and... Wait, wait, maybe her name is Dunica. I actually have no idea, she has no name. There's our daughter, Gormla. So minus two zeal. Minor diplomatic bonus towards all other factions. And minus one loyalty, but it's Dunica. Dunica's, Dunica's sound. He's fine. So can I demand a wife? It's insulting. Oh, Lord. Do you know what? Dunica, Dunica never didn't want a wife anyway. Dunica's happy out. We'll cancel that and we'll see if they will. Take Gormla. She's edumacated. Plus 20% research rate. They find that sufficient. I'm sure they do. Could we actually negotiate dual? No. Now can we have a military alliance? No. God damn you to hell. See, the other thing is that these useless fools have no economy. Their economy is actually very weak. They find the idea of giving us 350 quid for our daughter. They find that intriguing. I'm sure they do. Go on. We'll propose that offer. No, They've rejected. Well, a way off with you. A way off with you. I've always said that we had no interest in this region. Do you know what? I might be changing my tune. It is the winter of 866. Flanshin has failed to negotiate an alliance with Connacht. They have 19 forces and I presume a substantial garrison at Rothcroken. We are going to march. We are two turns away from finishing this forge. We are going to begin the process of marching Flanshin north to Arda. We are going to leave Erman, not Erman, but Clerken here, to regain some forces. And soon afterwards, he is going to follow after. We will end the winter of 860, 866, 886. I'm sorry, did somebody say they have a daughter for sale for roughly 300 gold? So, East Anglia, somewhere around East Anglia, they're demanding the daughter. Who's she going after? You see, like, what am I going to do with you guys? Look, look at this. Look at this. I don't even know these places. You're enemies with, with people I haven't even heard of. Just go away. I had high hopes, but yeah, I'm sure you had. I'm sure you had. Fair Car has become foolish by randomly going insane. That's great. Dublin and Cashel have declared war on each other. I presume... Does it tell us which one actually declared the war? I don't know. The problem there being... Does Dublin think that it has enough power to take Cashel, or is Cashel trying to take Waterford? Which I am now beginning to regret. Not actually seizing what way we're not being told anything about this region 
We're not being told anything about this region. We do have the Moot Hill built, so Fercar's insanity is not impacting the public order too badly. It's going to take a while before we can get that, and there goes a minus 15 food production. So I'm probably going to have to go for this first of all. That's our problem. We're going to be building these two have one by one. Dublin has retaken Linz. So there you go. We do not need any longer to worry about bringing Clerken. Clerken, stay in bed. You're fine. You we'll march Flanchina us. into Arda. Where's the fight? We don't have much money, but while we are here, we have the opportunity to increase or to upgrade some of the units to bonus armor and weapon smithing. So we'll increase, we'll increase these two. Do you know what, we might as well. We'll stay over the thousand, so you're the only one that's missing out and we're actually going to, in the next turn, we're going to have a big turn. We're going to get the forge and we're going to get the library built in Clan McNoise. So that's going to be minus five food. We are going to get some industry there. So it might actually be a better idea to move the forge to somewhere else. But it's there now. It's there now. And of course the other thing was that while ago, uh, the Church of the Oak was built. So increases to all the characters having children. They don't even need to be married. So Dunica now has an increased chance of having children. We will bring the spring of 887. It wasn't very active. Other than rejecting a marriage proposal, we will bring that to an end. So the ruler of Kirken has been assassinated. And they have declared war on somebody. Dunica. Dunica is drooling and raving and flashy. Now, when you say he's flashy, so he's he's bordering on insane and he's flashy oh he likes to wear he likes to show off his money and wear fancy okay he could he could have gone a different way that's given him some influence right okay that's grand with the way that that legitimacy is going at the moment i don't think it makes much of a difference well actually it does for a number of different reasons first of all we will click on Donica. And we have the ability with our new weapon smithing. It only costs 25. So we're going to put him up to armoring 11. Oh wait, no, that's level 2. And let's see some of the trusty units. Do you know what it's always? It's always the spear or the, uh, the swordsmen. The swordsmen are the rock of most of the armies. We'll upgrade these guys as well. What I was going to do was bring him across the border and put him raiding. But if the main army strikes out, then we would be in a spot of bother. So I am going to put him on the road to Rothkrochen. And... We are eager for glory. Flange in it. So we have some Kern Spearmen to upgrade. We have some swordsmen to upgrade. We can upgrade all of them, but I'm just upgrading the ones that have many, many chevrons. The fact that the horse boys have a good chunk of chevrons indicate how long they've been with us and how much damage they've done. We still actually have an ability to highlight a few more, so I might spend a bit of time uh, thinking about that. We have spent a good chunk of money, which means that there is nothing for buildings immediately. We do have a chunk before we can get the Cloister Library at Clan McNoise. That's going to hit food production. Uh, the Forge is going to hit... Is that going to hit food production? Oh, we don't need to do that for a while. We're, we're grand at level 2 for a good while. This is going to take a lot of money. Uh, the, the money isn't the worst, but it's the food production. So the Great Tithe Barn. We're actually at the... Um, at the limits, we have all the cows. Why can't I hold all these cows? We have pretty much all the cows that we can get in this region, or we're hitting maximum cowage. Uh, we have room for cows over here, and I think as we move forward, Wexford is actually going to be tremendously important, because I need to 
augment the green pits to get more food production. And then the Moot Hill, which is going to take about half of that food production to try and push for uh, opening up those two research chains. And we are one turn away from some technology. I'm not too sure which one. Minus one zeal and again an increased research rate, which is going to be fantastic. And we've actually opened up, we have opened up leadership just by building the moot hall. We didn't have to build the whole thing. That is fantastic. I thought I had to go down the, the whole chain. I don't. That is brilliant. We have mills as well. Oh, this is fantastic. Things are looking up for everyone, except for Tiernan, and except for Connacht, because at the start of the next episode, I'm going to take one more turn to position everybody where they need to be the way that Flanchina and his stark, raving, mad, flashy son can descend on Rathcroken, and hopefully... In one vicious strike, force the subjugation of all of Connacht. Because its ruler wouldn't marry, wouldn't let his daughter, his imaginary daughter, because I think she'd have to be auto-generated, wouldn't let his imaginary daughter marry my son. And actually, do you know what? The last thing I'll check is, who is it? Have some ale. It's not, Tell it's not, uh, Taig. It might be, but I can't check that his son is Taig. And that is the Taig. He dies in the year 900. And I mentioned him in the last episode as the man who died on the hide of the Dun Cow, the King of Connacht, uh, in and around the year 900. So Connacht, do you know what? You might be needing. We'll bring, we'll bring the hide with us because you might very well need it on the next episode. Thank you for joining me on this one. It wasn't the most exciting. A lot of moving of troops around. A lot of dealing with rebellious governors who should have known better and a lot of being rejected by girls and getting so angry that you deploy close to about 3,000 troops to raid down Connacht and I hope you'll join me on the next one the way you can also take out your anger on Connacht.